Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to our live session or webinar of the MOOC Viruses and Human Cancer. Let me introduce myself. So my name is Rodolphe Suspen. I'm an expert researcher at the Pasteur Institute in the Department of Virology and community manager of this MOOC. For these live sessions, we have the opportunity to have today Jean-Pierre Vartagnan, research director at the Pasteur Institute. Jean-Pierre is also director of the virology department, and we also have with us Pascal Pinault, research director at the Pasteur Institute in the unit Nuclear Organization and Oncogenesis. Thank you to them for participating in this webinar. So for this live session, I suggest starting with the question we received via the forum, and we will then continue with the chat questions. So first question, the E6 and E7 protein of HPV are considered as oncogenes. Recent data suggests that E5 protein may also play a role in oncogenesis. What do you think of these results? So Jean-Pierre, if you have an idea. <clears throat> yes, thank you, Rodolphe, for, the, for this introduction. Uh, this is a good question, of course, because there is some paper describing E5 of papillomavirus as potential uh, oncogene. However, this was uh, probably well described for uh, uh, bovine papillomavirus, where it could be clear that E5 could be an oncogene. For human, it's I think, because first, E5 is not expressed in all papillomavirus. Yeah, you may know that there is different group of papillomaviruses, and uh, for example, the group alpha uh, does not possess the E5. So it's not something that is present in all papillomavirus, suggesting that it's not something very E5 is not necessary for the replication cycle of the virus. So it's another argue saying that this protein is not probably uh, important for the life cycle. And then uh, at the late stage of the disease, we know that we have the integration of part of the virus, in particular E6 and E7. And E6 and E7 is well described to block P53 and retinoblastome. So they are uh, a strong uh, oncogene. For E5 is not integrated, it, it was deleted. So E5 is not involved in the let's uh, uh, step process for oncogenesis. Uh, then, of course, there is paper saying that probably if you make uh, transgenic mice with E5, uh, you have something which is uh, looks like to, to skin cancer. So I think that this should be repeated and uh, it's, it's for me, it's not an argue. So uh, I would say that up to now, we, are, we have no uh, strong argue saying that E5 is a potential oncogenes in the life cycle of, of uh, papillomavirus and could be uh, associated with cancer. OK, thanks for your answer. We have another question. Why is HIV-1 not considered to be an oncogenic viruses when in HIV positive patients, the proportion of many cancer is increased? Uh, maybe, uh, Rodolphe, I can answer to this question with another question related to HTLV-1. Yes, exactly. Okay. Maybe, uh, yes, so maybe I can make the parallel between HIV and HTLV-1. First, uh, we know that HTLV-1 is associated with cancer, in particular the uh, uh, adult T leukemia cancer, which is a, a, a bad cancer. So why these viruses, these retroviruses could lead to cancer and not HIV? Just we have to, to first explain the biology of these two viruses and the, the replication cycle of these two viruses. So HIV, you have a couple which is called TAT and REV, and you have two different mRNA, one for TAT, one for REV, and then you have a strong expression of TAT and a strong expression of REV. TAT is a transactivator, so you have the elongation of transcript, and REV is going to the nucleus to bring this long non-spliced mRNA from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. So you have a, a, a strong turnover between TAT and REV. 
For HTLV1, it's more complicated because tax and rex are not expressed at the same time. It means that if tax is expressed, rex is not expressed. And if rex is expressed, tax is not. So it's a dilute effect of tax and rex. And the biology of the HIV, it's more uh, performed by the reverse transcriptase uh, steps. So you have a high amount of viruses because you have huge numbers of uh, replication cycle. So you have lysis of the cells. For HTLV1 has the, uh, the main road of, of replication is through mitosis, means that the virus is replicating with the cells. So he has, there is very few replication cycles and you have no uh, presence of viruses. So you have no lysis of the cells. So for HTLV1, you transform the cells, but for HIV, you list the cells. So for cancer, you know that it could be maybe 10 or 20 years. So the cells has not the time to be transformed to lead to a cancer. Maybe I can add um, some point, in fact, to, to avoid some confusion regarding the terminology oncogenic because uh, um, HIV is classified by the International Agency for Research on Cancer in the class one agent. So it is considered to be tumorigenic, but it is not oncogenic and it is uh, terminologic differences. Uh, Jean-Pierre was talking about the mechanism, but the people in the YARC, uh, that, is, that depends uh, uh, from the, on the, uh, World Health Organization uh, are uh, correlating uh, HIV infection and the incidence of tumors. And of course, there is much tumors in uh, patients infected with HIV than in uninfected patients. It is the case, for example, for hepatocellular carcinoma uh, due to hepatitis B virus. So it is it is a, a, it is a nuance, but uh, it has to to, to be taken uh, into consideration. I think you are right. There is two points. First, is the virus could induce tumors? This is one point. Or is the virus associated with cancer? So for the first questions, the virus is not leading to cancer in itself. The virus does, doesn't encode for, for something that could lead to cancer. But, of course, HIV is correlated with cancer, you have cancer. You know, for example, stoma carpus is a cancer, is a skin cancer which is associated with, uh, with HIV. So of course you have cancer, but it's not directly due to the virus. It's because you have the, the human system which is lower than the classical patients which are, which are not contaminated with, with HIV where the, the human system can, can control everything. But in AIDS patients, the, the human system is low, so you can have the emergence of, of tumors because it's not controlled by human system. This is one of the, the most important points. But of course you are right. Okay, thanks for your answer. Pascal, we have a question for you. There yeah. are currently eight hepatitis B viruses genotype. Yeah. Are some more oncogenic than others? Um, it is um, it is a difficult question. In fact, uh, the the eight uh, hepatitis B virus genotypes are not uh, distributed evenly around the world. They are present. Uh, each genotype has um, a cradle, uh, a place where it seems to uh, to have appeared with the the human beings living there. In fact or have been transported during the, the evolution of human species and the migration of human beings from uh, Africa to the rest of the world. So these different genotypes are associated with anthropological groups of human beings, with geographical group. So it is really difficult to compare this genotype between, between uh, each other. Uh, because simply they are not uh, present at the same place of the world. Anyhow, uh, the, there is two genotypes of HBV that are really well studied because it, they are present in Eastern Asia, 
uh, where there is the most uh, chronically infected patients, especially in China, where there is a, around 90 million uh, person infected with uh, HBV. And in Eastern Asia, there is two genotypes, genotype B of hepatitis B virus and genotype C of hepatitis B virus. Genotype B is coming from the north of Eurasian continent, while genotype C is mostly coming from the south of uh, uh, Eurasia, from Indonesia, Taiwan, etc. And it seems Epidemiological studies have shown that uh, genotype C of HBV is more uh, oncogenic, more tumorigenic than genotype B. Uh, but for other genotypes, uh, it is more controversial and um, there is debate, for example, for the genotype uh, A, A2 and genotype D, uh, which are present in, in, uh, in, in Europe. So uh, we have we have correlation for Eastern Asia, but not for for other places. Okay, thanks. We have another question. Are there any genetic predispositions to the development of hepatocarcinoma in relations to the viral infections by HBV? Um, in fact. It is, it is considered by uh, clinicians that uh, uh, belonging to a family where there is already uh, hepatocellular carcinoma is a risk factor to develop hepatocellular carcinoma. So cl most clinicians and uh, the, the Society of Hepatology consider that uh, uh, th there is a predisposition, there is a susceptibility of selected individual belonging to some family in the world. But so far, there is no genes, no, no familial form of hepatocellular carcinoma that has been uh, found, and there is no polymorphism no specific polymorphism associated with a significantly increased relative risk to develop hepatocellular carcinoma. So it's a difficult question. Again, you have to think about the viruses that are different, already mentioned, and the people that are different, and the environment and the geography and the habits, the lifestyle, etc., that are different. So it is a difficult question, and so far there is no clear answer on that point. Okay, thanks for your answer. Jean-Pierre, we have another question. Can all oncogenic viruses induce an apobex mutational signature, or is it necessarily linked to the production of interferon? Um, it's two different uh, answers to that question. The first thing is um, all oncogenic viruses, we have to to, to differentiate oncogenic viruses and ApoBex3. But if you have an oncogenic virus that you will have the expression of ApoBex3, it's, it's two different things. So ApoBex, uh, oncogenic virus can induce uh, a tumor without the expression of ApoBex3. This is one point. And you can have ApoBex3 expression without the presence of viruses. This is another point. I think that it's the the environment that could lead to the expression of ApoBex3. Of course, there is many uh, papers describing that type 1 interferon uh, could induce the expression of ApoBex3, in particular ApoBex3A, but probably there is some other points, other, other events that can lead to the expression of ApoBex3 and it's not, everything is not described. So this is one point. And for example, you have also some other viruses which are not linked to the oncogenesis, which can uh, lead to the expression of ApoBex3, like for example, herpes simplex type one or measles viruses, which are not at all uh, associated with tumors that, have, that lead to the expression of ApoBex3. This is one point. And the, the second point is ApoBex3 could be upregulated in cancer, of course, it's described, where you have a specific signature of these uh, um, cytidine deaminases. 
the last point, there is some papers described in the literature, literatures concerning the infection with papillomaviruses, saying that there is some open reading frame of the papillomaviruses that can upregulate apobex 3 b that could then induce mutations. So you have some uh, uh, protein that could probably uh, uh, lead to the expression of apobex 3 A or B, but uh, I think that it's not really proved and uh, some uh, complementary experiments should be performed to, to really uh, associate the presence of the virus and apobex 3. Okay, and we have also another question concerning Apobec. Are Apobec three members all capable of inducing mutations in tumors? First of all, when you describe the Apobec three family, there is seven genes. Okay, those seven genes have different uh, cellular localization. So you have some Apobec three which are localized in the nucleus, strictly in the nucleus as for example, apobex 3 b and you have some other like apobex 3 a 3 c and 3 h which have a nucleocytoplasmic localization, and some other like apobex 3 d e F and G, which, which are strictly in the cytosol. So even if there is one or two papers describing apobex 3 g has a, a factor, a probable frac factors for the for tumor genesis, I think that 3 d e F and G because they are localized in the cytosol, they are, they are not linked with cancer. So far, we know that there is probably two apobex 3 which could be uh, probably linked with tumorigenesis. It's apobex 3A and 3B. Probably uh, apobex 3E works better than apobex 3B. 3A, sorry, 3A works better than 3B because 3A is able to make mutations in the nuclear DNA, can make also double strand breaks, breaks, which is an mark of, of cancer, and can also edit methylcytosine, which is also another mark of cancer. So the answer is yes, there is some apobec A and B that can make mutations, and probably it's only these two uh, that are able to, to make mutations in the nucleus. Okay, thanks. One question for Pascal. Why is hepatitis delta a risk factor for hepatocarcinoma during HBV infection? Um, so it is uh, the, the role played by the delta agent that is not uh, really a virus. It is a parasite of H HBV. It is a viroid agent. Alors, this agent is, is, uh, has been poorly studied uh, uh, from its uh, discovery by Mario Rizzetto in uh, 1977, but um, uh, under, under the angle of tumorigenesis, in fact. But now that uh, we are more and more controlling HBV, people get interested in hepatitis delta agent, and it seems that uh, to be infected with hepatitis uh, delta uh, is uh, increasing the uh, severe complication of HB of hepatitis B. So you are you are uh, heading uh, more frequently toward uh, liver cirrhosis, and it is a deadly disease. It kills more people than than uh, liver cancer. For example, and in, if you are infected with a delta agent, you are you are at a higher risk to develop as well an hepatocellular carcinoma. But it is not a, a, somehow like HIV. It is not associated with specific. Um, so far, it was not associated with a specific mechanism, molecular mechanism, well described, well characterized. It is correlation, it is epidemiological correlation, and they emerge only recently in the in the literature. When I begin uh, in, in, in research, in science, three decades ago, uh, people were not speaking about uh, hepatitis delta as a tumorigenic agent. It seems that it is also the better management of patients with hepatitis B, 
that uh, increase the, their lifespan and then uh, the risk for them to develop a liver cancer. And this contributes to uh, the emergence of hepatitis delta as a significant uh, risk factor of hepatocellular carcinoma. Hey, thank you. We have one other question. Is TP53 always targeted during oncogenetic virus infection? In 50% of cancer, you have the, the muta mutation in P53 or deletion in P53. This is one point. And uh, there is many uh, viruses, open reading frame from viruses that can target the P53. This is uh, an interesting question because uh, it's, it's a little bit strange that you have different open reading frame from different family of viruses that can directly target the, the P53 and degrade the P53. It's not the it's not uh, performed by by all the viruses, but you have a lot of uh, oncogenic viruses that can uh, bind to the to the p53 and and degrade p53. is is one of, of the reason why, for example, HPV16 is oncogenic, and not HPV1. Even if both viruses have an uh, E6 uh, protein, for example, the 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 E6 of of uh, HPV16 will bind to p53 and they grab P53, but not the E6 of HPV1. So the interactomic is very important. And the uh, more you make interactomics and, and more you see that you have open reading frame of viruses that can bind to P53. Pascal, maybe you have another answer. Um, no, I, I will. I will. Uh, and then I will assume that it is a kind of uh, evolutionary um, convergence of uh, oncogenic viruses that uh, make them capable to inactivate through uh, protein protein interaction uh, p53 but of course it is not a systematic situation in the in the two virus i'm working on uh, more commonly hepatitis b and hepatitis c viruses um, there is linked with p53 but uh, the uh, the interaction of uh, of viral protein with uh, with p53 is uh, is debated in, in liver cancer it is much more uh, point mutation uh, triggered by mutagenic agent present in the environment that are responsible for the inactivation of p53 okay thanks we have one question about HPV. Why do HPV lesions not always lead to cervical cancer? I think it's not because we are infected by uh, papillomavirus, even uh, subtype 16 or 18, that it's linked with uh, tumorigenesis. It's, uh, I think, a fight between the, the, the virus and the human system. And as you may know that... Uh, the, the cancer will emerge uh, from one cell which is mutated somewhere and uh, it's uh, it's complicated events it works after where because the, the the cells will be transformed and then you have a, a expansion of the cells but it, it's something which is complicated at the end to 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 have because uh, you need to get mutations so uh, I think it, it's not because you are infected by, by one oncogenic viruses that will necessarily be, be conducted to a, to a tumors. At one time, you may have the, the human system that will eliminate your, your tumorigenic cells. And so you have many, many uh, mechanisms that could be uh, linked with, uh, with this phenomenon. Okay, so we have one online question from Sande Kapnang Francis. I'm not sure of the name. So he say, in antiviral therapy, how can we treat a cancer while fighting its resistance mechanism? Is it even possible? <laughs> so, um, in antiviral therapy, um, there, there is several points here because there is the, the the issue of antiviral therapy, then the treatment of cancer, and the and the 
and the byproduct of the resistance of tumor cells. So, um, in fact, antiviral therapy, of course, when you uh, has been proven to protect against uh, cancer, well, in in uh, in Asia, or in Eastern Asia, where a lot of people are infected uh, with hepatitis B virus, uh, it has been noticed that when uh, they are uh, properly treated with uh, anti hep B uh, therapeutics. Uh, they uh, they are they are at lower risk to develop hepatocellular carcinoma, but it is upstream. It is a protective role, uh, a, a, a prophylactic role, let's say. It is not uh, a, associated with uh, really the treatment of tumor cells and uh, and uh, the containment of uh, tumor development. Once the tumor is there. Uh, you have to focus on on the tumor and uh, forget uh, the the virus. I, it's my opinion, but I am not a clinician. I'm not an oncologist. Hey, thanks for your answer. We have a question. Has a research team ever studied the correlations between dengue and chikungunya viruses and some common cancers? Mm. To my to my knowledge, um, chikungunya I don't know. Uh, dengue uh, I, I never read any paper about that. It is it is possible, uh, and if people do the, did that in the past, it does not reach uh, any interesting conclusion. These two viruses are not present on the uh, IARC list. Um, so they are not considered as as either directly oncogenic or indirectly oncogenic. However, on on a pathophysiological uh, point of view, um, we can imagine that, for example, in people infected with uh, with hepatitis viruses, if there is uh, a liver inflammation, because there is liver inflammation when there is a dengue infection, there is a phase of, of dengue that is uh, present in the, in the liver with an increase of uh, amino transfer races. We can imagine that uh, marginally, a dengue virus may play uh, some, some role in the, in the inflammation of the liver and potentially in the in the progression of of uh, of the of the liver disease and then uh, apparition of liver carcinoma but it is you know it's uh, it uh, i'm i'm doing an hypothesis that it that is not so so probable and i'm not sure that there is a, a sound epidemiological studies that have been performed already to 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 look at this hypothesis regarding ch chikungunya it is. Uh, I, I have even more. Uh, I, I have even. I have even less, in fact, ideas about uh, about this role because uh, chikungunya is is associated with uh, re replications replication in the in the muscles, and um, I don't think it has been associated with any tumorigenic process. But maybe uh, Jean Pierre knows a different thing about that. Francis, you, are, you are right, Pascal. Um, I, I would say it's simple. I would say that there is, you, you, you have listened to the MOOC, and I would say that there is seven viruses well described which are associated with cancer. Viruses that are linked to cancer are well described in the MOOC and, and the, the mechanism of those viruses also. So now, of course, with the metagenomics, if you analyze the uh, thousands and thousands of, of, of uh, sequences from a tumors, given tumors or liver cancer whatsoever, you will every time find some RNA viruses or DNA viruses which are present in the tumor. But it's not because you will find by metagenomics those sequences that are linked with tumorigenesis. So far, we have those seven viruses which are really uh, involved and, and linked with tumorigenesis 
but all the other family viruses that chikun, like chikungunya or dengue viruses, of course, you will have sporadic case, even one here or one here, but it's not really proved that those viruses are linked with, with cancer. Okay, thanks for the answer. We have one question. Is the frequency of viral induced cancer increased in transplanted individuals? It is the same story uh, as for uh, HIV. Uh, once you are uh, Im immune suppressed, you are more at risk to develop uh, tumors or, uh, or pro proliferation. Usually, people who are uh, under uh, immunosuppressive therapeutics are at risk to develop lymphoma, um, but uh, sometimes other other tumors as well. So, uh, I mean, it is the the the, the story of uh, immune suppression is is similar to the story of uh, HIV, but. Uh, Jean-Pierre, maybe you, you have other comments to do. Okay, thanks. Uh, are, there a, are there specific driver mutation in viral induced cancers? Ah. Hmm. Uh, here again, we are we are heading towards p53 and uh, and uh, neighboring genes in fact in my opinion there is no no specific driver mutation associated with uh, viral induced cancer um, there is plenty of uh, various uh, driver mutation depending on the tissue you are you are considering of course you will find very often P53 because it is a, a pleiotropic gene, uh, and uh, but you can find as well a, a retinoblastoma one mutation or or um, CDKN2A uh, cell cycle inhibitor uh, inactivation through uh, homozygous deletion on the chromosome 9P. Um, uh, I mean there uh, the. It is not specific. In fact, the the, the virus-induced cancer. In fact, they they pick up what uh, what is important uh, for cell proliferation, and usually, it is the same genes uh, that are mutated in non-virus-induced cancers. Is, that's my vision of uh, from my uh, standpoint uh, in liver carcinoma. Yes. Just want to add something. Yes, you are, you are right, Pascal. I agree with you. Uh, in fact, uh, you will see probably uh, the same pattern of mutation if it's viral induced cancer or not. But uh, I think that it, the virus is not uh, necessarily involved with the specific mutations. I think that uh, it's due to the to the selection of the cells after patient is present. That the cell will switch towards tumorigenesis. You you find the same type of mutations in presence or absence of viruses. I can add some maybe a molecular mechanism that is really interested interesting and uh, found during HBV integration. It is as you know maybe uh, the mutation of the telomerase promoter is really important for uh, cell immortalization and participate to the immortalization of the cells by reactivating TERT, that is an enzyme that uh, 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 struggle against the attrition of uh, uh, telomeres. And uh, in, in hepatocellular carcinoma, uh, there is a, uh, it is a, the third promoter is the main target of mutation. It is found mutated in 50, 60 percent of cases. However, when you are infected with, with HPV, it is not a point mutation that you will find. You will find some, of course, uh, in some occasion, point mutation. But more, most often, it is the integration of HPV sequence within third promoter that will activate the uh, third, third gene expression. So again, just to, 
just to say that, in fact, there is a convergence between the mechanism activated by the viruses and uh, the autonomous um, mechanism found in non-virus-induced uh, uh, tumor. Uh, there is a convergence uh, towards the same pathway and the same target. Okay. One question about hepatocarcinoma. What are the mechanistic differences between viral-induced hepatocarcinoma and alcoholism-induced hepatocarcinoma? Um, it, is a, it is a really difficult question because um, alcohol-induced hepatocellular carcinoma has been less studied than the other uh, carcinoma because generally the patient, the alcoholic patient, are really, uh, really are really weak, and they 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 are they are in poor condition, and uh, usually they cannot support uh, the surgery. So um, there is few few specific study um, assessing uh, molecular changes in uh, hepatocellular carcinoma, but there is of course, and there is no real no real difference. Few. Few years ago, uh, though, uh, the group of Jessica Tsukman Rossi in uh, Paris, Les Cordeliers, uh, uh, considered that maybe there is more mutations affecting tumor suppressor of the uh, arid, arid uh, family, that is, uh, uh, swine sniff factor that are cap capable to um, uh, modulate the activity of histones and to change the conformation of chromatin. So, and uh, the group of Jessica found there is much significantly more mutation in the arid gene family uh, when it is alcohol induced than when it is a uh, virus or uh, NAFLD induced uh, disease. So, in my opinion, it is. It is almost the only the only clues uh, about uh, uh, an alcohol specific uh, mechanism in the liver. Okay. Other than age, what factors favor HBV chronic infections? Huh. Uh, in fact, other than other than age, it's a good question. <laughs> And I thank you, uh, Rodolphe, to, uh, for asking me. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, the the the, the age at infection is the, is the major determinant of of uh, uh, of uh, the uh, the going to uh, to, to the chronicity. Uh, however, uh, we can imagine that people uh, who are immune immune suppressed as well are, are more susceptible to to contract uh, a chronic infection that uh, immune competent uh, in individual the this um, in fact uh, it, there, there is no at the moment real uh, genetic determinant of of uh, of uh, chronicity of of the, the the going to chronicity once you are infected with hbv there have been many studies usually you end up in the HLA uh, locus on chromosome 6P, the short arm of the chromosome 6, usually it is it is going there. Where there is different allele, but it is it is not uh, it, it is difficult to reproduce reproduce throughout the the different population in the world, and. Uh, we can say as well that the genetics can be involved because um, uh, it, uh, there, is, there has been uh, papers published a uh, while ago on, on um, um, uh, in inbreded family with families with consanguinity where it seems that there is a, a, a higher risk to develop a chronic infection with HBV. But, uh, it is it is it is rare. There is scarce uh, data about about this this phenomenon. So uh, at the moment, age remain really the the most important uh, factor uh, that uh, promote uh, the chronicity of HBV infection. Okay, thanks. We have one question of Meunier Sylvie. We say. What's news in strategy for design combinations therapy by targeting hubs 
in Interactum Networks? <laughs> question. Very good question, I think. Yes, <laughs> not easy. It could be uh, a different strategy to, to block probably or tumors or, or blocking viruses. If I understood the question, is, is it possible to block a cellular protein that targets a viral protein, for example? And the answer is, I would say yes, of course. <clears throat> the interactomic is it's, uh, it's, it's very important now. There is a lot of studies describing the interactomics of all open reading frame belonging to viruses. And uh, if you find, if you block one cellular proteins, then, then probably you can decrease the viral load. Of course, this is possible, but you have to be careful uh, to not uh, induce apoptosis of the cells or not target a protein cellular, which is uh, important for the life of the cell. But I would say that uh, it's a good question, and I would say, I would say yes, yes, of course. We have one question about Monia. I don't know the, the name. The Vivian study seems to suggest that more severe lesions were observed in patients vaccinated with other HPV. What mechanism can be involved knowing that the vaccine targeted the most aggressive HPV? I don't know if it's really clear. It is. You are talking. You are talking about uh, papillomavirus. Huh? Yes. HPV. I speak about the Vivian study, but I don't know this study. So uh, Sylvie implied that there is maybe a uh, uh, kind of uh, suscept increased susceptibility of patients vaccinated for other genotypes. I, I don't know that. You, do, do you know uh, this aspect of the? Of the vaccination against HPV, uh, Jean-Pierre? No. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I have no, I have no answer to that question. Um, <clears throat> maybe it could be a, a clini clinician that could answer to that question, I think. Okay. We have one question of Sande, Sande, happening, Francis, we say, in case of viruses induced cancer recurrences after treatment, what mechanism can explain the fact that it's more aggressive and sometimes more invasive? So, um, in fact, again, I, I believe, in my opinion, it is a general phenomenon with a tumor process, a recurrence of a tumor is generally more aggressive than the uh, primary tumor because uh, because it has more time to uh, evolve uh, and to uh, accumulate a mutation in the genome or, or, or genomic uh, uh, reshuffling, genomic alteration, uh, chromosomal instability, copy number variation, etc. And because generally, when people are treated for for tumors, so far they either they are they are uh, submitted to uh, to aggressive uh, therapeutics that contribute to change their genome and even can can uh, 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 by themselves increase the 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 uh, the proliferative capacity of the cells, or uh, when you are using targeted therapy. Uh, therapies, uh, you may select for a specific uh, mutation uh, on the receptor, EGF receptor, uh, or other, other tyrosine kinase receptors on the membrane or within the cells, and, uh, and therefore your, your uh, tumor, the tumor in question, uh, will uh, escape more easily. It has been selected to escape more easily to the next therapeutic you will uh, you will uh, you will use. So I mean it's a, it's a general uh, uh, ev micro evolutionary uh, mechanism that is uh, the 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 hallmark of the tumor process. I would add just something because the question is interesting and maybe it sometimes it's confusing. There is two things. There is the virus and the cancer. Okay, there is some viruses that can lead to cancer. This is a fact. 
But then, after the, fa the, 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 the moment where the virus infects and that there is the replication cycle of the virus and then can induce tumorigenesis by this own um, open reading frame, then the virus did his job and the cells become transformed at the same step that another cells which is not infected by a virus. So it, that we need to understand that the virus is in the cells, but then it could take maybe five years or 10 years without the virus because the cells got the first mutations and used by the virus to be transformed and to, to change its morphology. So the, the, the term invasive or aggressive is not linked to the virus is linked with the evolution of the cell, even without the virus. It's a term which we said that it's a hit and run mechanism, that the virus is coming, is doing its job, making mutation or whatever, and then it disappeared. And the cells start as another cell, which is also uh, tumorigenic, but without viruses. Okay, we have one other question. What may be the advantage for viruses to disrupt cell sick progression and induce carcinogenesis? Sorry. It's, uh, it's always, um, I mean, for me, it's a classical question about uh, 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 viral tumorigenesis. Um, in my view, but it's a personal view. Uh, the, the viral tumorigenesis is more or less, uh, is, it, it is an accident. It is a biological accident. The aim of the virus is not to uh, produce a, a tumor. The aim of the virus is to replicate, is to have a, a large progeny. And uh, to this aim, normally, the virus uh, don't want to change its uh, cellular environment. He, the, the virus, if he has a brain, would prefer the, the cells to uh, remain the same with the good differentiation, the good transcription factors, the good enzyme, the good, the good uh, mechanism of, uh, of uh, transport of the vesicles, uh, to to produce uh, and and export the 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 viral particles. So uh, the story to 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 change uh, the to rewire the all the genetic programmation of differentiated cells to uh, to promote cell proliferation and to decrease. Um, uh, 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 cell differentiation. In my opinion, it is not. It, it is. It is a byproduct of a pathological uh, process, but it is not um, uh, the initial uh, uh, condition that uh, that that are appreciated by the virus. But maybe. Uh, uh, it is a personal view. Maybe that uh, Jean-Pierre has, has another opinion on this uh, on this point. I agree what you said. Okay, we have one last question. For viruses of the herpes family, which can be lytic, is their capacity to induce cancer linked only to their latency phase? I would say that it's, it's complicated questions. So far, herpes viruses, you have some uh, herpes viridae in this family that some uh, herpes are linked with cancer and not other. For example, Epstein-Barr virus is an herpes virus is linked with uh, lymphoma or uh, Burkitt lymphoma. And you have also uh, HHV8, which is an herpes virus, which is uh, associated with a Kaposi sarcoma, uh, which is a cancer. So you have in the in this family some herpes that are linked with cancer and not the other. For herpes simplex type one, uh, it's it's different. Okay, because the, you have these two steps uh, during the the virus uh, replication, the latent 
and the leak step, and which is the same also for for EBV and uh, some other Ocaposi or HHV8 also. Uh, I have no really answer to your questions, but so far we have never described the link between herpes simplex type one and and cancer. I don't know if it's due to the fact that the virus is uh, latent or latent. It's complicated to answer because first the, the virus, it's, it's a very big virus, more than 200 kilobases, and uh, uh, we don't know all the open reading frame, the role of this protein, but so difficult to answer. Pascal, maybe you have... Uh, no, I, I think that uh, there is uh, herpes, herpes viridae, uh, the companion of uh, human species since a long time. They are not newcomer in our uh, pathological uh, landscape. And uh, I don't think that those which have been so far not tightly associated mm -hmm. with the tumor development are... are are responsible of, of cancer uh, uh, through their uh, latent form. I mean, there is, uh, when we were younger, um, Jean-Pierre, a uh, long time ago, you remember that uh, herpes simplex type 1 or, or 2, two uh, uh, was suspected to be at the origin of uh, uh, the uh, cervix carcinoma. And uh, when and little by little, it appeared that it was not herpes simplex type two, but it was uh, papilloma viruses who were the responsible of this type of cancer and who took the lead uh, some some decades ago. So I don't think that the herpes, the 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 the, the, the varicel zona, the the cytomegalovirus. And other uh, roseolo viruses, uh, HIV6, HIV7, can be associated with uh, tumor development. In my opinion, it is unprobable, but I mean, we will see. Okay, thanks you all. Unfortunately, I have no more questions. So I think that we can close this webinar. Thank you all for attending. Good luck to those who take the exam. And thank you, Jean-Pierre and Pascal, for hosting this webinar. And thank you for the quality of your answer. Thank you. Thanks for attention, attending.